we did arithmetic sequences in series first. And what was special about an arithmetic sequence? It went either up or down the same amount. So it had a common what? <clears throat> what did we call that? Yeah. Difference, very good. When up, it was either added or subtracted by the same thing every time. And in our formulas, that stood for D, the common difference. So geometric today is multiplied or divided by the same thing. In our formula, that's going to be an R, which stands for ratio. So multiply and divide, when we write our R, we have to write it in terms of division. I'm not, I said that wrong, rewind. Woo! We have to write it in terms of multiplication. Okay, so if it's going lower, like we'll see on one of these in a second, we know that dividing is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So we'll have to keep that in mind. Okay, so we're looking to see if these multiply or divide by the same thing every time to tell if they're geometric. <clears throat> so 4 times what is 10? It's obviously not a whole number, so here's what you're going to do to figure this out. You're going to say your second A divided by your first A. So grab your calculator and hit 10 divided by 4 and see what you get. Okay, so now we've got to go to 18 divided by 10. So 18 divided by 10, do it just going down the line. So not the same already. So that's not a geometric sequence, okay? All right, so from here, now it's real tempting to put 625 divided by 125, but that's not what we did on the first problem. You start with your A2 divided by A1. So this would be 125 divided by 625. What do you got? No? One, two. Which is what is a fraction? One fifth. One fifth. So now hit 25 divided by 125. One fifth. So five divided by 25. Okay. So this one is geometric, and so its ratio is one fifth. Now, what has happened in common sense, 625 divided by 5 is 125, and that's what y'all said. 125 divided by 5 is 25, 25 divided by 5 is 5, but remember I told you you have to write it in terms of multiplication. Dividing by 5 is the same as multiplying by 1 fifth, the reciprocal. So you knew it, we just got to write it as a multiplication. All right, so get that, and I'm going to erase it and get going. Sure, I told, reminded you this earlier in the week, but make sure you're labeling these formulas that we have. We had a couple for arithmetic on Tuesday. Did you say it was A1 over A2? Other way, A2 over A1. Always start from the, the one on the right. Go backwards. Good question. All right, so our formula for a geometric sequence is going to be A base N is equal to A base 1 times r to the n minus 1 power. So get that, you're going to need it and make sure you got it labeled. Is that r? r? In Attention students, yeah, all of Coach all Speaks of classroom class, please go to the new gym today. All of Coach Speaks his class, go to the new gym today. So it's a n equals a one r to the n minus one. Uh huh. All right. So I gave, got this formula for you for or this sequence for you. Excuse me. Four twenty one hundred five hundred dot dot dot. Directions say to write a rule for the nth term. So what we have to know to plug into our formula for the nth term is we have to know an a one. What's our a one? Four. Very good. And we have to know an r. So what's our r? And this is what Christian was asking about a second ago, what order you went in. Five. So if I did 20 divided by 4, I get 5. 
100 divided by 20 is 5. 500 divided by 100 is 5. So our R is 5. So now to write that in our formula, we would say any term is going to be equal to 4 times 5 to the N minus 1 power. So this won't work if it's not geometric? Correct. Okay. has to be on geometric. So now if I asked you for the 100th term in that sequence, it's obviously going to be ginormous. Yeah. Because one, two, our fourth term is already 500. So if I asked you for the 100th term, you would do 5 to the 99th. <laughs> That's humongous. And then multiply that by 4. Your calculator is going to give you scientific notation. Yeah. That's 1.577281812 to the 69th. So... That would have a, a one followed by 69 digits. Yeah. Oh nice. my. And then yeah. times four. <laughs> oh Lord. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't even with the times four. Yeah. All right, let's do one more of those before we step it up. Let's do 152, negative 76, 38, negative 19. Directions are the same. Write a rule for the nth term. So we know we need an A1. We know we need an R. What's our A1? 152. 152. What's our R? Okay, good. It's got to be a negative. And then see what? Said to do it the other way. 76 divided by 152. Oh, half. So it'll be a negative half. Everybody okay on that? Mm -hmm. So starts off with. A base n is equal to a 1, which is 152, times r to the n minus 1 power. Pretty good, huh? Now, if you remember from um, Tuesday, what happened is I'm going to start giving you less and less. And we still have to be able to write the formula. So let's do one now where I give you... A to the 4, A base 4, excuse me, A base 4 is equal to 12, and an R is 2. Okay, I'm going to write my formula over here just so I don't forget it. So what we don't have in this one is an A base 1. We don't have our first term. So what we're going to do is the same thing that we did with the arithmetic formula. We're going to plug in what we have to solve for our first term. So we would say 12 is going to be going my a in place. So I'm going to say 12 equals, we don't know our a1, our r is 2. What n is 12 to put up here? 12. No. Well, 4. 4. So 2 to the 4 minus 1. 4 minus 1 is 3. So 2 to the 3rd is 8. Base 1 times 8. Now, what would I do to undo that times 8 to solve for A base 1? Divide. Good. So, A base 1, take out a 4, be 3 halves, 1 and a half. I think that's what you were trying to figure out over there, Christian. Good job. So, now we got an A1 and we got an R. So, we're just going to write A base N equals A base 1, which is 3 halves. R, which is 2, to the N minus 1 power. Not difficult as long as you've kept up with those formulas. Those are going to come in pretty stinking handy when it gets test time. All right. Then we went even a step farther on Tuesday. I didn't even give you the R, so let's look at one of those. I got a base 3 is equal to negative 48, and a base 6 is equal to 3,072. Oh, my word. Man, it's multiplying by something big that's negative, I would guess. All right, so when we did this with the addition, with the arithmetic, we had to write two equations and then morph those two equations together, do a system. So a base n we're going to use on this side is negative 48 is equal to, we don't know our a base 1, and we don't know our r, 
but we do, we got an N of three, so three minus one. Right, we okay on that? Okay, let's do the same with that 3,000 number over there. Three, 3,072 is equal to A base one times R to the six minus one, which is the fifth. Now, what we did with this on Tuesday when we got here with the arithmetic ones is we were able to eliminate one of the variables. But that's not really gonna work here because of they're being they're multiplied by each other. So what we're gonna have to do on this one is solve one of the equations, either for the A or the R, and then substitute it into the other equation. So what I would do if I were you is I would solve the one for A that has the smallest R. So that'd be this one right here, the negative 48. To get that A all by itself, I would just divide both sides by R squared. So I got negative 48 over R squared is equal to A base one. So now, since this is what A base one is, I can take this and substitute it in there, okay? So, we are looking at 3,072 equals negative 48 over R squared times R to the fifth. Okay, what happens with R to the fifth over R squared? Uh, would it be like negative 48 R to the third? Yes, very good. R to the fifth over R squared is R cubed, so Christian's got that, so oh, come on. Whoops. 3,072 is equal to negative 48 R to the third. Shoot. Now we're trying to solve for R. It's being multiplied by negative 48. So let's divide by negative 48. So I don't know what that is. Calculators, 3,072 divided by negative 48. Negative 64. Negative 64 is equal to R to the third. How do you undo a third? Cube root. cube root. So figure out what the cube root of negative 64 is. Four. Negative. Good. So there's our R. So we had to do all that work just to get an R. Now we also need an A1. But I see a real easy place to find that. Right here tells us if we plug it in here, it'll be A1. So R squared, negative 4 squared is 16. 48 divided by 16 is 3. Make it negative. So our A1 would be negative 3. So finally now, A base N equals A1, which is negative 3, times R, which is negative 4, to the N minus 1 power. Why can't we just say A base N equals 12 to the N minus 1 power? Because isn't that what negative 3 minus negative 4 is? Good. This exponent is only on that. So we gotta, you can't multiply because then it would double dip that exponent. Good, Christian. Good, good, good in the hood. All right. Then just like with arithmetic, we had what was called a series when you added them all together. So same thing here. We're going to have a geometric series formula. So let's say the sum of your numbers, S base N, is equal to your first number times 1 minus your ratio to the nth power over 1 minus your ratio. And then when we did this Tuesday, I'm going to do the same thing here. We... Um, learn how to use that from our summation notation. So let me get a summation notation set up for you here. Okay, so we need, an a, our, we need a first term, we need an A base one, and we need an R. So we need a ratio. One. 
One is what? A ratio. No? Ratio is 16. No, it's not. So, okay, what is 16? What is it that they put on top of the house? The number of terms. Total number of terms. Would it be four? Would what be four? The ratio. No? No, it would be three. Okay, good. Yeah. Where do you, where'd you get that? And uh, four times three to the n minus one, that looks Re like r. Remember formula. from our formula, it's a one times r to the n minus one power. Four. So our r is three, our a one is four. Good. So we're gonna say sum is equal to a one times one minus three, and I'm, we gotta put an N up there, but we'll hold off on that for just a second, over one minus three. Now, what is gonna go up there on our N spot, right, right here? And we talked about it a second ago. 16. 16, your total number. Okay, now that uh, becomes an ugly number, because three to the 16th, and then you gotta subtract it from one. <laughs> calculator let's hit alpha y equals enter and bring up our fraction menu and on the top line let's just hit 1 minus 3 to the 16th yeah, and then move it down to the bottom and hit 1 minus 3 and then hit enter but I'm not done I haven't multiplied by 4 yet so then hit times 4 and it's still big but it's a little bit easier to say now Tyler you want to try again <laughs> 86,093,440. There you go. Good job. Took me a minute. Good job. So, I know y'all don't remember all the way back to two, so when we did that with the arithmetic sequence, it wasn't, it wasn't as obvious what the numbers were. This one, like Tyler said, just knowing what the formula says, a1 times R. It was like a neon sign for us on that. All right, let me I've, I've modify our plans a little bit like I wrote for you in Google Classroom, but I'm still keeping. I had for your virtual day next week is Monday, and I had for that planned a no assignment, just a catch up day. I'm going to keep that, okay? But should we incur more virtual days next week? because of the snow forecast, you are gonna have stuff to do, okay? So I'm not gonna give anything new on Monday, but if we're, if we're out additional days, you will have something, okay? Everybody all right with all that? Mm -hmm. All right. How do you think it's gonna go? Is it gonna be out? Well, 